the House of Wellness is open. Today we uncover poor food choices masquerading as healthy food, and you'll be surprised. We'll expose the makeup mask and reveal what your makeup says about you. We go in search of the perfect hangover cure, and it's not the hair of the dog. So what we're doing here is actually a healthy alternative. Plus, we'll be exploring the root causes of acne, and it's not just a teenager's problem. My nickname was Pizza Fates. All that and much more coming your way today. So let's all get well, stay well, live well and look fabulous. Right here in the House of Wellness. Hello there everybody, welcome back to the house. We've just been reminiscing about our wilder youth, those good old days, talking about hangover cures and what we used to do. Now it's been at least, what, six, seven months since I've had a hangover. Good point. Kind of miss them, kind of mm. don't. Uh, but you know what I had to do? What? Burgers, Barocca, binge TV. The bees. The bees. And some vitamin B probably wouldn't hurt. That's I used true. to go for the big cooked uh, breakfast. Always a good starting point. You know what, there's a bit more science to it these days. And we'll have more on that a little bit later in the show. And coming up as well, he's an Olympic gold medalist, world champion, swimmer and former world record holder. Mm -hmm. That's right, calm down. I love Klimmy. Michael Klim is in the house. It's going to be good. Later we have GQ in the hot seat and he'll be answering your calls and questions. And of course, don't forget, you can reach out and find us at thehouseofwellness.com.au. It's a great website. Uh, Gerald is there for easy access. You can email him with any question you have. You can even let us know what you guys think of the show. Yep. A bit of feedback's never too bad. You know, yep. tell, tell Ed what you like him to wear and things like that. Don't do that. Um, <laughs> you can also call us no need. on 1-800-469-788. I'll just button up my shirts and head off to work. We'll be fine. <laughs> Don't forget that. Follow us on Facebook as well. It's proving really popular. So many visitors each month. Two million or so views of some Braga. of our clips. Really good stuff. And also... Uh, you'll be uh, on your way to a healthier lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Now, a nutritious, well-balanced diet is the foundation of good health, and it does take time to make sure you eat well and takes a bit of effort as well. Yeah, so does. when you go to all that effort, you want to make sure you're doing it right. Yes, but you could really be surprised, Ed, to learn that some of these food choices commonly assumed as so good for mm. you may not actually be so saintly. Yeah, so to help us expose those sneaky foods, we're joined today by our expert nutritionist and dietitian, the lovely Susie Burrell. Hello, Sue. Hello. Hello. Could this be true? Is the foods that we snack on and diet on are not the beacons of health and wellness we thought? Well, these are foods that I see my clients eating all the time and while they may be okay for us they're perhaps not as good as we may think and they're foods like tuna, rice crackers, soy sauce, things that we're mm. eating every day yeah. that perhaps we're not aware of actually what's in them and why they can be an issue for our health. So what what is being missed here? Why aren't they mm. as healthy as we thought? Because I thought tuna and Absolutely. soy sauce and all those things are great. Yeah. Well tuna for example, now tuna is nutritious yeah. but if we're eating it for the omega-3 content the truth is that it's actually relatively low compared to salmon right. and we also need Need to be mindful because tuna is a large fish and it contains mercury and so really it's recommended at most three times a week and for pregnant women less than that yes. because it's a go-to fish but let's not forget other things like salmon and sardines which actually have a higher omega-3 content and we don't have this issue with mercury with it so it's good to be mindful about mixing up our food choices. Okay so the bigger fish have been chomping on littler fish and up it goes. Up the and yes. the body can't rid itself of mercury. You've so. got oils there so do we need to be mindful of how we're cooking our food too? Absolutely because often we're going for spray oils because we think spray oils are healthier yeah. because we're using less but the truth is that all of the antioxidants are destroyed when we process the oil wow. so actually natural extra virgin olive oil is the best oil and a lot of vegetable oils are highly refined so not so good for us often they're palm oil so really even though there's a common misconception we shouldn't cook with olive oil it's always the best choice because it's retaining the vitamin E and the antioxidant content. Okay. Now, you've got one of my favorite takeaway foods sushi and you got the brown rice version there is that a good choice? What are we looking at when we want to make better takeaway choices? Well, Asian food on the whole is considered a healthier yeah. choice. But if we look at actually sushi, it's often mainly rice. Yeah. And we're adding tons of soy sauce to it. Now, one of those tiny little fish has got almost your entire upper daily limit of salt in it. So, you know, oh. if you're choosing sashimi and edamame and seaweed salad with a little bit of soy or salt reduced soy at home, it's okay. But if you're just having rice rolls with tons and tons of soy sauce, it's actually not a good choice. It's going to okay. retain fluid, put pressure on your blood pressure, yeah. and you sh we need to be mindful and look for the lower salt varieties. Interesting. So yummy, though. So when we're eating fish, little fish, but not the little fish that have the soy sauce in them at the Japanese place. 
<laughs> Go easy on your little fish. Little fish. <laughs> can you recap these health tips for us parents so we can be uh, healthier as so we go on? Be mindful of some of the processed foods. When mm -hmm. you're looking at, at mixing it up, so don't just have tuna, have some salmon, some sardines to get a range of different nutrients. Anything processed like Asian food with lots of rice in it, soy sauce, rice crackers, there are better options there. And always cook with extra virgin olive oil. It's your best choice and don't worry about the spray variety. We should also be aware of how high we're cooking it with it, right? Yeah. The, did you mention that, at, the, the extra virgin? Well, at home, you wouldn't reach the temperatures. Oh, There's an issue. So whether you're roasting, baking, remember the food's oh, not good. as high as the oven says. So it's okay. perfectly safe for roasting, baking, stir-frying, no problem. Yeah. I had sushi last night. Kind of regret it. <laughs> Thanks, Susie. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Well, now that we've got the health back in our healthy food, we can continue to live well. Phew. But occasionally, <laughs> living well can go off the rails. If you threw back one too many drinks last night, it's highly likely your healthy diet might not be looking so appealing today. Uh, uh, but before you reach for the unhealthy alternative, we sent James Tobin in search of the cause and cure of the dreaded hangover. <laughs> Did you know that around 40% of Australian adults drink alcohol every single day? Whether we like it or not, alcohol is woven into our culture. It's what we do to celebrate and socialise, despite the pain. In search of a hangover cure. Now, don't for a moment think we endorse this kind of behaviour. But it can happen to the best of us, you know, after that big celebration, the wedding or the school reunion or the Melbourne Cup. So the question is, if you do have one or five too many, what can you do to minimise the damage? But first, let's look at the chemistry of a hangover. When you drink, your liver converts the ethanol into both toxic and non-toxic compounds. Problem is, if you drink too much, your liver releases more of the toxic compound into your bloodstream where it finds its way to your brain and other organs. OK, so hangover is really what, you, what I would call an acute, the withdrawal effect that, that the body suffers when you decrease your levels of alcohol. The commonest things that people will talk about is um, severe headache and feeling like they've been hit across the head. And that's courtesy of being dehydrated because alcohol actually has a particular effect on a hormone that stops um, the secretion of another hormone that makes you pee more. So you actually um, do more urinating than you would otherwise, therefore you actually dehydrate yourself. And let's not forget the dizziness, vomiting and diarrhoea. We've put men on the moon, but a cure for hangovers has always eluded us. And for centuries, people have been coming up with crazy treatments, like deep fried yellow canaries, pickled sheep's eyes in tomato sauce, the list goes on. But here in Australia, the land of rum rebellion and yard glass sculling PMs, we prefer the big fryer. I would definitely be avoiding that. Well, the liver and the pancreas are responsible for overseeing the metabolism of our fat. Um, and when they're not working quite so well, then we don't metabolise fat well. And too much fat in your gut gives you really quite, a, you know, uh, diarrhoea and, and continuing to feel unwell. So again, it will probably prolong the gut effects. OK, so no more late night visits to the greasy spoon. So let's have a look at what we can do to cure that hangover. Well, of course, there's always Barocca with its B vitamins. And Hydrodol with a lot of the same vitamins and Chinese herbs, designed specifically for drinkers in that they suggest you take it before, during and after the session. So do they work? Um, most of these products are multivitamins. Um, you know, vitamins are good, but you actually, as a human being, have got enough of those vitamins on board um, to, to be useful. You don't need to dump a whole extra load of them. And in actual fact, you, most of the ones that they give you, you actually, you know, pee off and metabolise before they're going to be much use. We're running out of options here. What about the hair of the dog? 
Well, again, there's probably some merit in that, in that a hangover is about the, the withdrawal from alcohol. So if you're having a Bloody Mary, you're having tomato, it might slow it down, but it's probably going to prolong it rather than actually otherwise alleviate the symptoms. So what we're doing here is actually a healthy alternative. According to dietitians, eggs are great for hangovers because they're high in cysteine, an amino acid that rids the body of toxins. And they're a great source of protein, calcium, vitamin D, B12 and acetylcholine, which is good for your brain. Everyone feeling a little bit better? <laughs> so, we're getting there, and I haven't given up yet. I'm sure there's a cure somewhere. Next up, James discovers a hangover cure like no other. So do people ring up ahead of time and say, I'm going out on Saturday night? We find out how to make a great start to your day, and it's easy as the application of your foundation. And joining us on the sofa later, Olympic swimming champ Michael Klim will be here to talk about life after hanging up the goggles. That and so much more after the break. Hangovers. They're an occupational hazard for every party animal. But is there a way to minimise the pain? Earlier, we were going through a bunch of hangover treatments. Everything from rehydration through to the big greasy cook-up. But how about this for something extreme? Come on through. Welcome to the hangover clinic. Yeah, seriously. This place actually employs doctors to intravenously rehydrate and feed vitamins, painkillers and anti-nausea medicines directly into your blood. Treatments range from 60 to 200 bucks, and it's not just for hangovers. They also offer pick-me-ups, including pure oxygen for those who might be feeling a tad run down. So we just dial it up here. Get the... This was the first of its kind in Australia, and it's the brainchild of ex-ski instructor Max Petro, who noticed the paramedics were always bouncing back better after big nights on the turps. And I said to them, guys, how do you do it? And they said, well, we'll let you in a little secret. Because uh, they were qualified paramedics, they'd administer each other IV bags and medications the next day after a big night out. So I had a terrible uh, hangover one day and I had to teach a, a group skiing. So I knocked on the door and said, guys, like, I'm feeling like I'm going to die. Can you hook me up? And they said, yeah, no worries. So took me into that little shack, gave me a cannula, sat me there with oxygen, and within half an hour, I was like it never happened. So do people ring up ahead of time and say, I'm going out on Saturday night, can I book in for Sunday morning? They book months in advance sometimes. <laughs> they'll say, we've got a hands-on or a bucks-on, and they'll book, uh, and we also do home service. Look, the festive season is fast approaching, and chances are some of us will be tempted to have one or two too many. So remember, don't drink on an empty stomach, and whatever you do, stay hydrated. <laughs> yes, and the uh, the soda water in your vodka, lime and soda does not count. I did ask hydrated. about that, apparently not. OK. JT, what else did you learn about some hangover cures there? <sighs> I know you've been to many Channel 7 Christmas parties. <laughs> yeah, well, look, I set myself a mission and I've got to say, in a way I kind of failed because I was searching for a cure and there just isn't one. There's no golden ticket. There's no get out of jail free card. If you're going to drink a lot, it's going to hurt the next day. Sneaky paramedics, though, coming up with this. I remember yeah. years ago as a young pro lifeguard, we had a competition between us and the Baywatch lifeguards. You know, minus David Hasselhoff. Like an abs thing. Oh, we were doing a like, surf lifesaving carnival, right? right? And they were all drinking heavily the night before. Then the next day, of course, half those guys are paramedics. So they were on the IV drips. Same trick. They killed us. Yeah. We were terribly young, though. Yeah, well, like getting a litre of fluid mm. into, your, into your body straight away so I mean, it seems like that could help and I remember hearing stories about the flight attendants back in the old days having a, a, a pump of the oxygen tank good, yeah. when they'd get on feeling a little bit dusty yeah right but look a couple of things I did learn if you're gonna eat like you know after after a big night you feel yeah. like a big greasy meal you want a burger or a kebab it's a bad idea because oh. your body's already processing all the alcohol okay. then you're putting all this fat in and it's got to process that so at the end of the day something healthy is good but is that going to make you feel good? Okay. You know, just is a fruit salad going to cut it when you're feeling hungover? You want a falafel and you want it now, don't yes, you? Yes, exactly. Down the main strip of uh, Vegas too, they've got the hangover bus and it's doing just that, doing the IV drips for all the party goers. Can you imagine? 24-7. Yeah, I can imagine it's pretty popular. Ah, oh dear. All right, great story. I think you've given us enough info to get through the silly season. Yeah, that's it. I mean, uh, at, at the end of the day, it's about moderation.
<laughs> good luck with that one. Great story, <laughs> mate. Thanks for that. Thanks, Zoe. Mate. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that one, guys. Women and girls have experimented with cosmetics throughout history. In fact, it goes back to the time of ancient Egyptians. But it's not just about looking good. There are many reasons why a woman will wear makeup. To find out more, we're joined by our creative stylist, the wonderful Fernando Barraza. Gosh, I love your name. Thank you, Zoe. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. Now, when I'm not at work, I don't like to wear a lot of makeup, but you can't deny that there is something magical about a lick of foundation. Absolutely. I, I don't think it's about not wearing makeup. It's about what you're wanting to project. You know, mm. I think concealer and foundation were made to cover imperfections. I think with the rise of social media and lots of celebrities out there on Snapchat and all of these uh, websites and TV, they're just caking it on, you Too know. Too much. There's some of these makeup tutorials, it's like, you know, clown <laughs> contouring and, you know, uh, love hearts. And it's the base of that makeup is kind of like drag. Yeah. You know, you're yeah. creating highlights and contouring and big eyes and lots of lashes. When you're 16 or 15, it, it, you don't it's really need that. You're really just covering up beautiful skin and try to keep that skin for as long as you can. And that's the thing you're talking about, beautiful, youthful skin, like in your 20s and your 30s. It ranges what you do with your, your foundation, right? Absolutely. What I do think, you recommend? Look, lots of girls love that fresh, dewy look. Yeah. You can create that at any age. You know, there's so many beautiful, you know, highlight palettes and, and contour palettes out there. And, and it really depends. I always say assess your skin. Yeah. You know, you need to know what your skin is like. Is it oily? Is it dry? Do you have patchy areas? You know, do you have dark circles? There's something for everybody. And we've got an image, don't we, here of Jordan. <laughs> yes. She, I mean doesn't even look like she's wearing foundation, but she is. She is. Look, you know, she's she's that 20 to 30 sort of age bracket, so she's got that clean, fresh look. Yes. You know, she's got a little bit of concealer, a really light foundation, and a little bit of powder just on the T-zone. It's really simple. Keeping it fresh is always key. Yeah. Now, when we move into our 40s and 50s, yes. we've got some pics here as well. Yes. Um, what do you suggest we do differently with our foundation? I always say assess your skin at any age okay. you're at. You know, drinking water and hydration is, is key. It doesn't yes. matter what age you are. And so I think it's really about sort of figuring out what your problem areas are. You know, maybe your skin has gotten a bit dry. Maybe, maybe you've had kids and, and your skin and, and your, you know, your skin is not always going to be the same. You know, it might be a little bit saggy. It might be sort of tight. Yeah. You might be sunburnt, you know. Yeah. So you really need to sort of look at your skin and see what is going to work best for Do you. Do a little bit of investigation. Absolutely. Right. And Absolutely. what about when we... Um, we're going into those golden years. Yes. How do we transfer these tips and tricks? Just because you're a little bit older does not mean you can't go out still looking great. You know, don't just go for a mascara and a lipstick. You know, a bit of foundation goes a long way. A pop of colour sort of, you know, on the cheeks. You know, it's it's that feeling and emotion yes. of how you feel and what you're projecting when and you actually walk out. We have another picture here, don't we? Yes. Of someone with gorgeous skin still in their 50s and 60s. Yes. Is application different at that age? It is. I think, again, you know, it really depends on what coverage you want. So you can go for something that's a little bit lighter in a liquid or in a, in a, in a powder yeah. or a BB cream. Um, and then if you want something a bit heavier with a bit more coverage, you can kind of, you can go, sorry, for a compact, um, you know, for, for something that, that's a little bit sort of thicker for, for night. So really it depends on your skin and your age, but you can use so many of those different products there, there are throughout the years. Absolutely. There are so many different products for any age group. It's really about how you feel and what you're wanting to, to um, you know, to what achieve. kind of coverage you want and what, achieve, what yeah, do you want like to achieve. A day down, you know, at the beach, you might use a tinted BB. Exactly. You're going to be on TV for the day, you might get a bit more coverage. Exactly. Right, so exactly. we should have a couple of products, do Always. you think? Always. Yeah, Always. There's different conditions and different times uh, will vary the, the foundation um, and also sometimes even the, the colour. You know, if you've gone on holidays... Yeah. Or a spray tan. Or a spray tan. <laughs> you know, so you might need something slightly darker. So always sort of assess your skin before you go and put on, you know, last season's foundation because you might actually be, uh, you know, you know that, that look that Ooh, you sort of get. You don't yeah, want that not rounded pretty. edge not at on all. the chin. Blend, blend, blend is Blend. Key. Okay, so that was <laughs> what I was going to ask next. Yeah. A couple of tips for everyone at home. Of blend. Course. Blend, blend, blend. Assess your skin at any age. Yes. Um, and, you know, and just be confident in, in the skin that you're in. Own it. You yeah. know, love it. And sure, if you've got a blemish or a pimple like I do today, <laughs> just cover it. You know, there's, there's enough products out there for you. And I love that you're owning covering it as well. Absolutely. It's, it's not a male-female thing. <laughs> no, not at all. Thank you so you're much so for joining welcome. us today. Thank you. We'll be right here after the break. Our favourite pharmacist, Gerald Quigley, will be here to answer all your calls and queries. 
and later it's all about the baby and the balance for when two becomes three. Talk about it, don't let the resentment build up. All that and so much more, we'll see you soon after the break. Okay ladies, it's that time again, when we roll out the most comfortable chair on TV, then give you the floor. And thanks to our friends at LifeSpace, your probiotic specialists, it's all about the baby that's coming. Every week, we seek out a well-deserving mother-to-be and give her a great big comfy chair to rest in, a soothing foot massage from our Rob, and the chance to ask our panel of pregnancy experts for a little good advice. It's just me and Johnny a lot of the time. We have each other's support so much that I just want to, yeah, to be a team effort and to really share that special moment together. Yeah. I think it'll be a good foundation for our lives going forward as a family. This is Melinda and Johnny, best friends and lovers. These guys are never apart. But Melinda's been hearing that having a baby changes everything. People have told me that when um, the baby's born, that your partner can sometimes feel like he's dropped down the ranks in terms of that the baby ends up coming first and then you have to put yourself second to look after the baby and your partner really ends up becoming third in line when before he was your number one. Um, so I'd like some techniques to making sure that my partner feels included and doesn't feel that I've forgotten about him after the birth of the baby. The fact you've asked about it is about 50% of the solution. As long as you recognize that that is a tendency to become engrossed in your baby and to forget everything else, then I'm sure your partner's gonna be just fine. Make sure that the elder females of the family don't elbow him out of the way. Make sure he asserts himself and gets involved with his baby. And trust him, ask his advice, and offer him recognition that he's a father and he's as responsible as you are for the baby. While you're pregnant, you are churning out an absolute mummy margarita of hormones in that last trimester. And these hormones are going to make you very, very focused on your baby. Now, if you've got a male partner, their testosterone levels are going to drop about 30% too. So you have this chemistry. They're actually going to have um, nurturing hormones coming as they nurture and are more involved with that baby. So this means that they're going to connect as a family with you and your baby. You can't change the fact that your lives have changed forever. It will never be the two of you again, but it can be even better. And it's just about holding on to that and making time and space and talk about it. Talk about it. Don't let the resentment build up and it will, will end up being a lot less traumatic than you may anticipate. Interesting story, or the clock is ticking down, so yes. It's not overwhelming at all. Mm -hmm. uh, now... <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> two is becoming three, yes. Gerald, and it can be quite a pressure time yes. for a couple. On behalf of Benji, I'm asking this question. Mm -hmm. What do you suggest? Well, being experienced as I am, having been through this three times, you've just got to get involved. And, and Benji's terrific, and, and it's really a matter of getting the routine stuff handled by some others. And as some of our experts have said, don't, don't be pushed aside by the rest of the family. It's your baby, mm. you two. Get into it. Yeah, and there's many ways to do the same thing, right? And yes. whatever you do is right. Seriously. I hope. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It will be. Yeah. Let's grab some of your calls. Our favourite part of the show here, we have Hayley standing by in Katoomba in New South Wales. Go ahead. I have epilepsy and take medication to manage my condition. Are there certain supplements I should be taking so that I am not depleting my body of essential nutrients? Great question. A lot of medications deplete our nutrients, don't they? Side effects. They do, Ed. And uh, Hayley, important for you to look at the, our, our friend magnesium, yeah. vitamin D, vitamin C and vitamin B6. And that's all being depleted by the medication. Right. So they're the things you concentrate on, Hayley. OK. Uh, an email now. It's from Jack in Hawthorne in Victoria. He asks, after a bout of food poisoning, I noticed more than normal my hair falling out. Are the two related and can you recommend a suitable treatment? Jack, they are related because you're in a stressed situation. So your gut is probably suffering from poor absorption, mm -hmm. as you have with a really bad bout of food poisoning, as he said. So you get your gut back into shape. Some probiotics, first thing, some glutamine, which is mm. a gut wall repairer, and a multivitamin, so that you're getting all the nutrients, mainly zinc and silica, 
along with the ability to repair. Kind of get the feeling we're hearing so much about gut health in the last year or two. Yes. We're just starting the ball rolling with yeah. that. We are. It's a separate organ. There's yeah. two kilogram of bacteria in yeah. there. Six kilogram amongst us. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Probably a bit more for you. That's <laughs> right. So long. Gooby bacteria, isn't it? Our number is 1-800-469-788, by the way, to get through to us. Final caller standing by is Susan in Lura. How can we help you out? My whole family uses fish oil um, every day, and my husband always buys the cheapest products he can find. But I'm always wondering whether we should be buying from a health food store. Uh, are they better quality, or are supermarket brands just as good? Yeah, good question too. I mean, we're quite inundated with choices with these brands, days, aren't we? We are. And Susan, the important thing to do is to look at the EPA and DHA content of the fish oil capsules you're buying. And there are various brands, as we've said. Some companies enhance them with some extra coating and some other things, for which you will pay more. Mm -hmm. But the higher the EPA and DHA added together, uh, the higher it is, the more potent the fish oil is because you need a fair bit to absorb it. And the other option, that's fish oil, the other option is krill oil, which is a different packaging and is far more easily absorbed. Ah. So there is an option there. Rather than take a whole lot of fish, you can move on to okay. krill. If it's more expensive, is it necessarily better? Not necessarily, no, yeah, because okay. it's all about the content. But staying with Australian brands is important. Yeah, all right. Now, just following on from the hangover story, yes. obviously I'm covered, but for all my mates out there, <laughs> festive season is underway. Supplements to support a hangover? Well, and, and I did, there was a great segment that yeah. James did, but I, I disagree with some of the, of, the, of the statements that we have enough nutrients in our body to cope with uh, uh, some al alcohol poisoning. It's mm. a poison mm. if you're having too much. Remember that people are getting to strife, Zoe, are uh, usually the occasional drinker who might have one or two extra and they suddenly find they're trying to cope with a hangover. So the seasoned drinkers, they can look after themselves. But it is important. There are products around loaded with, with minerals and B group and things which will make a difference along with plenty of water. Yes. So to imply that it'll just get better on its own, no, not, not at all. Go one, and get some help. One of the many feathers in your cap is you're a medical herbalist. Yes. We need to support our kidneys and liver at Yes, this time. liver mainly, Ed. Yes. Mm -mm. So some milk thistle. OK. Your favourite. Milk thistle. <laughs> yes. It's hard to say. All right, good tips. You'll be back later in the show. I will. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, you. And don't forget, everyone, you can find us at houseofwellness.com.au. If you missed us last week or the week before or the week before, you can catch us there. All the shows are there. And while you're there, you can drop our good mate GQ a line or email or call us directly, one 800 469 Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Everyone else is to mil. Right? We're, we're quite likeable. We're likeable. we got good stuff there. Mm. And now, coming up next. If you suffer from bad circulation, the A to Z of vitamins is here for you. And after the break, we look into the treatment that helps with the angst of acne. Blue and red light are actually essential for the management of acne. We'll see you back here soon, after the break. It's an affliction that has plagued humans since Adam and Eve were young and in love. Mm. Leonardo da Vinci did his very best to cover the shy Mona Lisa's teenage shame. But now, in the 21st century, we may finally be putting the squeeze on the most hated skin condition in history. <sighs> Take a look at this. This is an acne treatment. You know what, there are so many in the market. There's creams, there's lifestyle changes. What I want to know is, what really works? Acne is a skin condition that includes white and blackheads, pimples, cysts and nodules. They are a result of either blocked pores or a bacterial infection in the sebaceous glands. Meet Andrea Walford. To look at her now, you'd never know that for years she suffered from severe and chronic acne. So, Andrea, tell me a little bit about your acne story. Did you did you have acne as a child? Um, not as a child, but um, as soon as hit uh, adolescence. Mm. My nickname was Pizza Face oh. because I think pepperoni and olives, you know, it looked like that. It was awful, and um, so it affected me that way, where I couldn't socialize as freely as a teenager would. Yeah. Acne is not a dangerous condition in itself. However, 
it can affect self-esteem, confidence, and even trigger depression and anxiety. Um, it's difficult to talk about it even, yeah, thinking about it now. Did you, did you withdraw from people because of your acne? Oh yeah, so I was embarrassed. Yeah. Because people think that you don't wash your face, that's why you have acne, you eat too much chocolate. People have been searching for acne cures since the beginning of time. The ancient Egyptians used to use honey and salt. Greek physicians prescribed wiping the affected skin with a cloth while watching a falling star. And more recently, Western baby boomers tried their luck with antibacterial soaps and sulfur-based creams that dried their affected skin to a crisp. Fortunately, today's skin specialists have developed cures that actually work. Let's come through, Andrea. The terrible thing for Andrea was that unlike most of us, her acne didn't go away. It stayed with her right up until her mid-30s. It's looking pretty good. Okay, it's looking good. Andrea finally found success with sebaceous gland ablation, or SGA, a process pioneered in Australia by Dr. Philippa McCaffrey. As a practitioner, I was looking for something that was a non-drug solution because if someone's going to have a condition that can last, you know, 10, 15, even 20 years, you don't ideally want to treat it with a drug. Oh, interesting. Mm. So I was looking for something that could permanently stop the breakouts, wasn't drug-based, but that worked in the majority of people. This therapy requires the practitioner to insert a tiny electrified needle into the affected sebaceous gland and burn it out. I don't get breakouts like I used to anymore. Now, mainly, I just treat the scarring. Yeah. Yes, which has reduced dramatically. Whether you have mild or severe acne, it all comes down to personal perception and how that actually affects you. Overall, the best thing to do is to seek the right advice. In most cases, mild to moderate acne is easily cured with a simple regime of cleansing, moisturising, healthy diet, and the newest treatment, light therapy. This light therapy mask is the very latest in 21st century acne prevention. Looking a little like a Ned Kelly Mardi Gras mask, it shines tiny LED lights onto the skin, apparently killing acne bacteria and reducing inflammation and excess skin oil. David Mays is a pharmacist and the Senior Director of Global Scientific Engagement at Johnson & Johnson. So obviously, when we look at light therapy, there are different products on the market. Is it specifically the blue and the red light? Blue and red light are actually essential for the management of acne. Blue is very beneficial in killing P. acne, a uh, primary bacteria for acne. And red actually helps decrease the inflammation associated with the, the redness of acne, which so many people are co cognizant about. So David, acne is one thing. I'm an almost 40-year-old woman. I've got fine lines. Can this help with fine lines? Well, it's only specifically designed for <laughs> acne patients. Uh, unfortunately, it's not. Uh, we haven't studied it for, for fine lines or wrinkles. Okay, can you invent that one next? We'll try. We'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm back in the Z zone. Remember that old uh, movie, My Big Fat Greek Wedding? Windex doesn't work. Oh, it doesn't work. Have you tried it? It does not work. It does not work. Now, Zoe, I thought that acne was just a teenage phenomenon, mm. but it's not. Adults are still being affected yeah. by it. There's a total misconception when it comes to when acne can actually affect you, particularly when we look at adulthood. It's a lot to do with, obviously, a hormonal function, yeah. but again, it does come down to sebaceous glands. Diet plays a huge impact on but most of us live in a very stressed, toxic environment. It's trying to manage all of those elements uh, and obviously it reflects in your body and in your skin. So that sebaceous gland ablation Yes. Sounds like a groundbreaking treatment for chronic sufferers too. Nice alternative to taking medication. Look, I think it's fantastic. And when we spoke to Dr. McCaffrey, it was very, very interesting to look at the technology behind it. It's very specific. It's very uh, focused on one specific area. The nice thing is, is that when we spoke to the clients afterwards, is that they were having really successful results mm. and results that were long lasting. It's good, isn't it? It's well, very, good very timely giveaway so. here. Thanks for that, Zoe. We're here to help you put your best face forward. In fact, we have 10 Neutrogena Light Therapy prize packs to give away right now. Each pack includes one of these new light therapy masks that we saw, as well as a select range of products to help give you clear skin. Just have to head to our website, houseofwellness.com.au, and in 25 words or less, tell us how having clear skin will change your life.
And don't forget, every Sunday morning, we're on the radio all around the country with Larry Emda and the team at the House of Wellness. GQ is there as well. You'll hear them on 2GB in Sydney, 3OW Melbourne in Brisbane on 4BC, Adelaide's 5AA and 6PR in Perth. Now make sure you get a hands on a copy, I'm so excited, <laughs> this, of our Christmas gift guide. You can pick it up in store now and we're in there, Ed. Oh, we're exciting. in there. You can find the perfect Christmas gifts for me now. For, and for me. Plus, <laughs> <laughs> Lots of great fragrance ideas too for him or her, along with a little help for those Christmas stockings as well. And hundreds of ideas for all the family. It's a good issue. Stay with us, we've got more to come right after the break. If you want to keep your brain well fed, the A to Z of vitamins is for you. And here's Klimmy. We'll be catching up with Olympic swimming champion Michael Klim, chatting about his splash into men's fragrances. See you soon, back here at the House of Wellness. Welcome back, everyone, to the House of Wellness. Joining us today, we are graced with one of the undisputed stars of the <laughs> Sydney Olympic Games, swimming legend turned entrepreneur, Michael Klim. Klim. Thanks for having me. Graced. I don't know, I love that term. You love <laughs> it? I've been graced with, with anything. <laughs> uh, so you've obviously gone from water to land. Yeah. Life is still as busy and crazy as always. Absolutely. Talk to me about balance, that, you know, that word balance. Well, balance is pretty hard to achieve, but I think for me, uh, there is a few, th not necessarily non-negotiables, but things that I go to want to get yeah. that balance. So um, exercise is key, being outdoors, getting in the ocean, spending time with my kids and just being present. So like mm. depending on what I'm doing, trying to be present right now, mm. or you know, it's, I think it's just, you know, there's all different dimensions of wellness and I try and tick as many of those boxes. As possible. Of you course. know the deal, 17 years and change to the day from the greatest race at the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, you're going gonna to get that in, aren't you? <laughs> I've got the air guitar race. on the day. Is still swimming a little bit as a matter of interest? <laughs> Absolutely. For me, swimming is very meditative these days. It's, it's well, even though the phones are waterproof, I still don't take it in there and yeah. it's just my time and, you know, I swim 30, 40 minutes, just, you know, it's my so solitude time. But at speed, Zoe, at great speed. No, not no, at now all. it's, it's leisurely. Yeah, absolutely. He's dog paddling it's now. like yeah. the Queen Mary. <laughs> you know, I've been a big fan of your fragrances uh, for ages um, and your, your range of amazing skincare. Thanks. What's the inspiration behind the new? Well, range? The, the Deep Blue was actually a... Um, I've, always, I've been fascinated by by free diving this year and also oh, and then really? and the deep uh, deep ocean. So this is a little bit, bit more mysterious, a bit more sophisticated. The original Aqua Beyond was more of a day night fragrance. This one was we had a bit of fun with it. We had to I had to dive off a cliff and go deep into the ocean and um, got creative. But there was a price to pay unfortunately. Well tell me about that campaign. Well, you we, just shot. Yeah, so we shot in three or four different locations, but we had to actually create diving from a, you know, from a cliff. Oh, so I was lot. diving from a platform and um, at great speed and unfortunately misjudged a uh, photographer that was standing Stop on it. Stop it. Is that right? Here we go. Yeah. He's leaping off the cliff. <laughs> Whack. Going pretty quick there. Cut to a nice wow. uh, pool in the studio. But then, oh. So um, you came out with a lump on your head, which is rather fitting, because go ahead and tell the rest of the country uh, your nickname back before you were... Well, um, when we ooh. first met with... Goodness <laughs> gracious. When I first met, met Ed, I was actually known as Lumpy, and um, I was known as Lumpy because I was quite chubby. I'm, I'm actually Lumpy I'm now. I'm, <laughs> I'm turning Lumpy every day, but... Uh, but yeah, I lost that nickname, but it kindly reminds me of that every yeah, day. Yeah, he's kind every of like that. Time. Mm -hmm. Every time. Every um, time. Great range of stuff. Before we go, um, water safety, really important part yeah. of your work. With so many kids, I'm sure they're pretty handy swimmers, but for the rest of us, with summer coming? Absolutely. Obviously, it's, it's still alarming that the it drownings is. are still going up year by year, and it's simple things, you know, obviously, what you're making sure you have a pool fence, never letting your kids swim alone, you know, making sure that they have swimming lessons. It's at so age simple. Did you throw your kids in the pool? We, I've got a swim school, and we we actually have infant aquatics from the uh, from the age of six months. So you can get your kids water familiarised very early on. So yeah. water safety is key. So, um, but make sure that's. Look me in. Absolutely. Benji will jump in though. Yeah. <laughs> Hands on. You've got to be in there with them. And when Absolutely. you jump in, make sure there's no photographers under the seat. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Open your eyes. That's a, that's a key. Awesome. <laughs> Good to see you, Lumpy. Thanks for having Thank me, guys. You're looking like you could swim 100 in no time at all right now. Mm -hmm. Stay with us after the break. If you suffer from bad circulation, the A to Z of vitamins is for you.
Welcome back. It is A to Z of Vitamins. Tom Gerald is back with us. We'll have a look at the G's now. Ginkgo biloba. Will my Ooh. brain work better if I have some? I'm not so sure about you, Ed. But still, look, it, in theory. So we're, we're driving the feature of a herb like ginkgo is, and it's called biloba because the leaf has two sides, so it's perfectly so, biloba. Um, ginkgo wow. drives circulation. Every part of our body needs circulation, especially our brain. So imagine if you can supply maximum nutrition from the superb food we're eating up into your brain more efficiently, yeah. and ginkgo works on the blood vessels to get that up there. So that's the rationale. Good for athletes, for mm. performance, and also a lot of work being done in the reduction of dementia risk, Wonderful. which is a bit of an issue in Australia. Okay, wonderful. Good one. Ginkgo so, below. So what, what age should you start to do that for prevention? Well, look, it, it really, you look at your family history, you look at your memory, so any little things that crop up, Zoe, that you think, oh, I'm not really thinking as clearly as I should, perhaps it's worth having a chat about ginkgo. Very All interesting. Right. Let's follow up from our uh, story on acne as well. Anything else help from a nutritional standpoint? Nutritional perspective, we've talked about uh, food and things, but zinc is the mineral that really acts almost in an antibiotic type action. So yeah. of all the minerals concerned for acne, it's zinc. Okay, good one. Now, let's get to our phone calls. We have uh, standing by Melissa in Adelaide. Go ahead. I suffer from nosebleeds on a regular basis, and I just wondered what the reason was and how I could stop them. Okay, fair question. Mm. Difficult, because blood coming out of your head is fairly dramatic yeah, and it yeah. looks awful. So, Melissa, we've got sensitive blood vessels. On a hot day, they come to the surface, they can rupture, so you've got to look after those. We talk about saline... Uh, oh, sprays yes. without a preservative to irrigate. You can buy some little gels to put inside your nose to heal any ruptures. Mm. And it's a matter of just being careful when you blow your nose or if you sneeze, back off the pressure. Okay. And that's what will make a difference. Helpful. Good luck, Melissa. This is an email from Maureen in Canberra who's written, my nails used to be quite strong, but lately they've become very soft and keep splitting and breaking. What can I do to help them? Mm. The mineral of choice is silica. Mm -hmm. and silica is quite specific for nails and zinc as well. If you get white spots on your nails that shows that your zinc insufficient, check, check. Yeah. white spots, yeah, he's nice. got them. You're okay, but he's oh, got them. So got zinc, them. zinc and silica are the two, Ed, and uh, that fixes the problem. Right. Slowly, it takes about six months, but it will fix. Okay. Be patient. As is our final caller waiting on the line, Mandy's in the Gold Coast, hello. I suffer from red wine headaches after just one glass, so it's not a hangover. I wake up with them the next day and they last for about 12 hours and they're right above my forehead. Any tips or advice you could give me would be great. Yes, over to you. Festive season. And it's not, as you say, it's not a hangover, mm. uh, Mandy. This is a, a sensitivity to particular ingredients in the red wine. So obviously avoid that. But you can, just because one species of red wine, one extract. So mm. Cabernet might cause it, Pinot might not. So if you're brave, you can go on a little fun trail <laughs> or ignore it altogether. <laughs> take, and take a rosé, you know. It's rosé? Summer. Summer. Perfect. Perfect. Love a rosé. Yes. Um, I used to love a rosé. Yes. We've got to go. Highlights from the show. My highlight was James' story. Very relevant for yeah, this time of year. Actually. You, my little beach Fernando ball. Fernando Barazza. <laughs> Clemmy, gold medalist. Still mm. looks like he could Perfect. take the, uh, the Dolphins into the next <laughs> Olympics. Uh, thanks to everybody who's appeared on the show today. Appreciate that. And a big thanks to you for watching and to all our friends at Chemist Warehouse too for getting behind us here at the House of Wellness. Enjoy your week. We will see you next time. Hit the pool, kids. <laughs>